So we thank God for the conference, the way it's going, and um, things are opening up as we are progressively moving towards the end of the program by tomorrow. And um, every, everyone who has taught us has brought dimensions of Christ from, you know, different streams. Hallelujah. Different streams. Different streams. The fact is that the, 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 the breastplate, where is it? The breastplate has to do with the body of Christ, we all know. And this is the breastplate that our high priest is wearing today, the bishop of our soul. Hallelujah. And um, the idea is that we, as we gather, that we are learning about the different tribes with different expressions of Christ. Hallelujah. We are mem many sided members of the same body. Hallelujah. And briefly, because of time constraint, I want us to look at that stone there, Sardius, which is the stone of Reuben. Hallelujah. Amen. The, st the, st the, 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 the stone that has the inscription of Reuben. Reuben, as we know in the scripture, all we know about Reuben is that this man, Reuben, uh, is a very weak man. Hallelujah. And as a result, he was cursed by his father. Hallelujah. Amen. That was just one aspect of, the, of Reuben. It's just one aspect of Reuben. And we know that each and every one of us, as we are many members of the body, all of us are grouped in this, among these tribes. All of us. So I think that the teaching will help us to identify where we belong. The kind of flow of Christ that comes through us, that comes to our heart. Hallelujah. And that becomes the expressions of Christ that we release to the body. Because every tribe, there is something they bring to the corporate Israel when they gather. The flavor of God that they bring, that other tribes are lacking. Hallelujah. So if you are from the tribe of Reuben, not only that you have a, a passion that is uncontrollable. Hallelujah. Because the passion was such that it was so uncontrollable in the life of Reuben that he had to sleep with a, what you might call in those days, his mother. Hallelujah. Because the concubine of your father is your mother. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. That is what we see. But when that passion is handled by God, you know, as one is maturing, you see compassion rather than passion. In the life of Reuben, not only that he is the, 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 the it means that he sees, hallelujah, that we are supposed to have opening of eyes to see. Reuben has the kind of compassion that you don't see in any other tribe except in Judah. All through the scriptures. Except in Judah. Hallelujah. Because you see it when they decided to kill the dreamer. The dreamer. Today your dream will end. Today your dream will end. You see him rising to the occasion. Not only that he had application of wisdom. He had application of wisdom to talk to his siblings in such a manner that they will release this man that as it were, they are part death sentence on to him. Despite their rage. Because they were angry at him. Because it was, it was in their days, it was, um, it was so much evil that your elder brothers will worship you. You understand? So they were in a rage. They wanted to end his life immediately. But you see the way he handled them for them to be able to release him. So you see, people who are located in among this tribe, they have wisdom, application of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Wisdom in handling affairs within the body. In handling affairs within the body, issues in the body. It's not everybody that handles issues. It's not everybody. Though we all have the word, we all know the word, but when it comes to the capacity to handle issues, handle arrogance, handle spite within the body, you find out that it's only a few. That does not mean
mean that others, they are not part of the body. But it's a grace. And not just that it's a grace, they also grow in it. Hallelujah. They can go the extra mile to give and continue giving. There are times, it, 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 it seems as if they, 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 they are foolish. Hallelujah. We'll turn them foolish when we are immature. For us to understand what happened at that place where Joseph was supposed to be killed. I want us to look at one scripture. Give me Genesis chapter 30. I think verse 14. From there we'll fetch a pattern to understand the position of Reuben. The place of his heart. The place of compassion in his heart. Hallelujah. Not only that that stone is red. Huh? It's a yellowish red stone that has to do with the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Huh? It shows also compassion. So you see from verse 14. I said 14. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother, Leah. Then Rachel said to, her, to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldst would thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. Remember that this scenario was playing out in the face of the boy who brought, who brought this mandrakes. The scenario played out before him. And the product of that mandrakes was who? Joseph. Huh? Remember that he grew up knowing that his father hated his mother and loved this woman, the auntie. Hallelujah. So he grew up knowing that. And because of that lack of love, in the Orient, they know that mandrakes is meant for fertility. Hallelujah. Not only meant for fertility, it's, it's also meant for arousal. Praise the Lord. Arousal. It can wake up some things that are dead in man. It can wake up some appetite. Hallelujah. So, because the mother is not loved, that's why he went about looking for mandrakes. So that his mother will be loved again. So that his mother will be loved again. That the father will now be able to come in unto the mother. So this was not a young man. He has grown. To understand the mechanics of love and love making. That will tell you that he's no longer a small boy. He understood the plight of the mother. He understood the plight of the mother. Hallelujah. And he went out hunting for this and brought it home. Here the loved auntie came again. And he's now negotiating before his eyes the mandrakes that he brought for the mother. So that the mother will be loved again by the father. So that negotiation took place. Hallelujah. It was because of that negotiation that the father now had to. Coming unto the mother. And what was the product? Isaac. Hallelujah. Amen. That was the product. Because at, at, at this time, she has stopped bearing children. Hallelujah. But was still very fertile, but has stopped bearing children. Here again, he's seen the brothers, the half brother. That the father loved so much. That the father had sown coat of many colors for. Hallelujah. The beloved of the father. The one who should take the birthright that is supposed to be his. Because right out there, they know that the one is, is the son you love that you give the birthright. So he knew this one would take the birthright from him. So what is it in him that made him to save his life? What is it that made him to say? Because if he was killed, he knew that his birthright would be secured. The birthright would be secured. Hallelujah. 
Because these are the values we should start coveting. These are the values we should start coveting. So it's not just enough to talk about breastplate, breastplate. We need to know the character of each stone, the character of each name. What is it in them that made them tick? That qualified them to be a patriarch? A value in the spirit that we should look at and borrow from, learn from, drink from. Because there are facilities in the spirit. They are living. They are not dead. Hallelujah. So you see in this young man what is called compassion. Compassion that will make one to stick out his neck. Even for the brethren. At his own peril. He does not have right. Even though he knew his right. But he has forgotten about the right. Completely. He wants to save life first. Is it not Sister Chida was talking about the experience he had yesterday, that uh, she had yesterday with a, a, a sister that was calling over the phone, a, a lady that was calling over the phone, because she may not be qualified to call a sister. Hallelujah. But that is the truth. That is the truth. Are you my sister when you are not a believer? Huh? No, you are not my sister. You are not my sister. But uh, you are just existing. Hallelujah. You are just existing. Uh huh. You are you are my sister, even though you are my blood sister, generationally on earth. If you are not a believer, you are just existing. You are just existing. That is the truth. That's what the scripture says. Huh? Because you are not born. You are born of the will of flesh or will of man. You are not born of God. If you are not yet born of God, you are not yet my sister. Hallelujah. I should be showing compassion. Unto you to preach the gospel to you. So that you can be born of God. Hallelujah. The extra mile she went. When she was itemizing it yesterday. I was saying in my heart. This is one value we need in the body. That even at the point of somebody who is an unbeliever. Making you a fool. Making you a fool. You are still seeing the good in that person. You are still seeing the good in that person. And you are willing to go the extra mile to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. Reuben is a man that we should all go and study and ask God prayerfully that we develop that capacity to love even at the expense of our own rights. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may not understand very well. When it was time they had sold Joseph and Joseph, and if you check the scripture in chapter 37 of the book of Genesis, you will notice that when they sold Joseph to the Midianites, Reuben was not there. Reuben was not there. When he returned, he cried. He cried bitterly. What happened to him? Where is he? Where is he? Because he was looking for a way. To return him to the father without the knowledge of his siblings. Hallelujah. What kind of love is that? It is the kind of love that if it exists among us today, we'll say the person is foolish. Or he's a fool. Look at the way they're trampling on his rights. Hallelujah. We must get to the point where we begin, where we begin to die to certain rights and privileges. Hallelujah. This man was dead to it. He was dead to it. Even though he knew, he understood. Uh, he understood agony, pain of not being loved by the father and, not, and the mother not being loved. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you a story. None of them is alive today. I know they are alive in the spirit because they were born again. At a time, I think it was in 19, 19, um, either 79 or 80, my father wanted to marry a second wife. And I came home from school. Then I was in secondary school. Came home. I was now, you know, discussing this issue with him. I was trying to make him see reasons. That even the children you have now, you won't be able to train them. You want to come and bring more problems for me. My father said, yeah, I know it's your mother that sent you. Remember, I was in the east. My mother was in the north with them. He came home. I know it's your mother that sent you. I will marry the second wife if you and your mother knows what you will do. Do and let me see. 
And I told him, okay, <laughs> no wahala. <laughs> Go and marry. But the thing, just let it, let it be known to you that you are saying my mother will die because you want my mother to die the same way your mother died when you are young. I said, but I will do one thing. On the day you marry, as you are coming into this compound, I cut off your head. I cut off the head of that woman. I was barely, I think about, not up to, not up to 14, 15 that time. I said, I will go to jail. I'll go to jail and come out of jail after 21 years. I'll still have my life ahead of me. But I won't risk you telling me that you want to kill my wife, uh, my, my mother. And I will accept it. And that was the end of that marriage. It never took place. It was many years after my mother went home. And I told him, it is time for you to go and marry. You can now marry. He said, ah, look at you, look at you. You that saved me several years ago, you now want to entangle me again. <laughs> the, what you told me that time, the children I gave birth to, have I been able to train them? You want me to go and bring more now? No, no, no. That, is, that was the only time he told me it is your turn to go and marry. That was the only time he ever told me that. Huh? That was the pain of a young man. Seeing the father trying to transfer the love for his mother. To another person. Another woman. I could react that way that time. How much more a fully grown man. Who saw that the mother was not loved. And went and brought something that will bring back the love of the father to the mother. And before his eyes it was, it was negotiated away. It was negotiated away. And yet he didn't have any grudge. He didn't have any grudge. Seeing the one who should take over his, life, his right, where he was about to be killed, forgot about his right, forgot about bitterness, hallelujah, and went to save him. Thinking that he has saved him, thinking that he has saved him, he now came back again, found out he was no longer there. He began to cry over it. Where is he? Where is he? We should have everything. Any man from this tribe does not bear animosity. Has no grudge at all. It's not there in them. It's not there in them. If you check within the body, there are very few. There are very few. Yes, they can, they can cry. They can cry. But they don't take anything to heart. They don't take anything to heart. These are things we should pray for. And ask God, help our heart. That we won't hold on to rights and privileges. We won't hold on to them. That we will know how to love and show compassion as you would to the bodies, members of the body. Hallelujah. They had sold him. And they went down to Egypt. Because of famine. And the food was given to them. Though in portions. And they came back because the man who was the president requested that they should bring their younger brother. Hallelujah. That they should bring their younger brother. If Simeon will be released, they have to bring their younger brother. Before their father, he said something. He made a very profound statement to the father. He said, if I don't bring him back, kill two of my sons. Kill two of my sons. In the place of this Benjamin. Hallelujah. Is somebody. The, the, yes. The son, the son of the other woman. He is putting his life on the line. And the life of his generations. The life of his generations. Hallelujah. On the line. For the son of that same woman that is loved. Let's check well. Oh. Let's check well. This breastplate. Judgment that will come from it will, my, my sister, you talked about judgments. Judgment that is coming from that is very weighty. Because when you check our lives vis-a-vis -vis the judgments that is only found in this one man, Reuben, can we stand it? Can we carry it? Can we carry it? Hallelujah. But you see, whatever they lose, God multiplies it for them. Yeah. Because soon they got into Egypt. He had four sons. Remember the principles. At the time he said that let them die if I don't bring him. He had killed them in his heart. Yeah. 
In his heart, he had killed them. In his heart, they no longer existed. They were gone. Because it's not in his hands to bring back Benjamin. He's not the person that is in control. If he was in control, Simeon would have followed them back home. He was not the one who was in control. It's just for the love of the family. Love of the family. Love of the body. Love of the brethren. Love of Israel. Hallelujah. Because of love of Israel. He was ready to close his own generations. Just because of their youngest brother. Hallelujah. This is the name. The meaning of that name. He knew pain. It's not a story that was told to him. He knew pain. Pain happened to him. Hallelujah. But the pain did not get to his heart. He didn't allow pain to mix up with the way he related with his brethren. Hallelujah. Pain was not the issue that was motivating him. What was motivating him was love, passion, passion, passion to serve the father. Passion to serve their father. Passion to see that the father did not, their father did not go into pain. Hallelujah. How many of us would not want our father to go into pain as a result of what is happening around us? His reason for living was to please their father. It was just to please their father and nothing else. Nothing else. To please their father. I didn't want us to look into the scriptures and begin to, you know, let's just preach it that way. And I believe the spirit of God will open our understanding and will create a hunger in us to go prayerfully and face these issues. Face these issues. Because they are... They, you know, from now on, not every of these names will be, any, every of these tones will be discussed in this conference. Not every one of them. Hallelujah, in details. No, not every one of them. But from now on, we'll begin to look at them. Look at the meaning of their names. What is the import they are bringing to Israel? When they gather, when they carry that insignia and they are marching in their bands and their standards. Hallelujah. What was, it, what was the flavor of Christ that they were bringing? What is it that is expected of Judah? Because right from that time they discussed that he said, that Reuben said, let my two children die. From that time on, it was Judah that took over. Judah took over the discussion from there. He was the one who now finally negotiated with the father until the father released, uh, released Benjamin. Hallelujah. He was the one who went to, who went to, 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 to Joseph. And say, may I whisper to you, this boy you are requesting for, that you are now found your silver cup in his bag, that you want to hold her stage as a slave. Our father will die if he does not go back. Rather take me, let me be your slave. See leadership. You see leadership. Hallelujah. And these are their destinies. These are actually their destinies. Not their weaknesses. Like you said, it's not every time we see people according to their weaknesses. Let's see the destiny that God has apportioned for them to attain. So when we talk about them, we prophesy those destinies. Hallelujah. We speak those destinies over their lives. And you see them getting, rising above their weaknesses to grow into that destiny. Because that is the way God sees them. It's actually a failure of the church. For us to label people according to their weaknesses. It's a failure. And when we fail, we are actually failing our father. Because it means we are not seeing the heart of our father. We are not seeing the heart of our father. For if we saw the heart of our father, what we should be speaking over their lives is actually their destinies. That which God has apportioned for them, their apportionment. Of John in the judgment of God concerning them will be what will be spoken over their lives. And you see them gravitating into that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that is how we reign in this season. Yeah. That is how we reign in this season. Yeah. 
We see Nigeria. We know the destiny of Nigeria. We are not speaking concerning the present circumstances. But we are speaking over Nigeria, the destiny of Nigeria. And you see Nigeria changing and coming into realization of that destiny. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean that we are not seeing people being beheaded. That doesn't mean that I, I, I had over the telly this morning before we came uh, for this conference a research that one professor in the north uh, did over 10 years to study the various uh, terrorist groups in Nigeria. I said they are 120. 120 groups. 120 groups. And each group has five, uh, has um, 50, 50, uh, 500 AK-47 in each group. And they are 120 in number. So if you multiply it, we have 50,000 AK-47 moving around, roaming the streets in Nigeria in the hands of terrorists. This is a research work carried out by a university done over 10 years. If you look at it, it's their hope. And I saw the man who is the head of um, um, firearms in the, in the, in the, in the House of Reps. Uh, trying to, they are trying to make laws so as to allow people to carry guns. Hallelujah. I say, he was saying that he will serve as a deterrent. I said, look at the talk of a, a foolish man. You want to fight violence with violence. Huh? America is learning. After 20 years, they were disgraced out of Afghanistan. With all their might. With all their might. Disgraced out of Afghanistan. That they are still left so many Americans behind. In Afghanistan, they are now negotiating with terrorists who are turned into government on how Americans could come back. And if you understood America very well, not one head of Americans should waste anywhere in the world. They came, their army came to Nigeria to rescue one American. Hallelujah. So we are not looking at those gimmicks, political gimmicks. We are looking at the destiny of Nigeria. And we speak over Nigeria. About the destiny. We prophesy the destiny that God has apportioned to Nigeria. We are declaring that Nigeria is a ship nation. That is what we see. Righteousness will spring forth from Nigeria. Men will come from all over the world and come and learn righteousness from our leaders. And therefore a change is coming. That change will sweep away all the deluge of lies. All these liars, political liars. He will sweep them all away. They are beginning to learn that power is not in their hands. Power is actually in the hands of God. Because the, God has a way of turning the hearts of men. And they will disobey them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our quest is to please our Father. Is to please our Father. And to please our Father, we must know the heart of our Father. Concerning every member of the body of Christ. That we no longer see them according to their weaknesses. Rather we see them according to their destinies. And we speak the life of God. Because that destiny, a portion for them, is the life of God over their lives. That is the reality concerning them. That is the reality of their being. That is who they will become. So we cease from discussing their weaknesses. We cease from talking their weaknesses. We cease from talking, using our sanctified lips to talk about the weakness of Nigeria. The more we talk about the weakness of Nigeria with our sanctified lips, the more we see evil in the land. But the moment we begin to speak the destiny of Nigeria, begin to see Nigeria through the eyes of our father, the more we realize Nigeria as a ship nation. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.